going on this is always back with another video of java essential training series so this video is going to be about a real list you might have noticed that so far all the arrays had primitive data types stored in them well there's a reason for that array can only hold a primitive data type and we need a way to store objects in the same way there is why a real list can really help Another benefit of array list is that you could increase and decrease the size of array dynamically. It's not a fixed size. So in this program, I have main class and the main method, right? So first I'm going to declare a list. So the list interface is a member of a package java.util. When I select it, I get an import statement on the top. So let's press enter. And as you can see on the top, you get the list import statement from java.util. Each of these collection objects include list and maps. can contains as many items you want, but it's good practice to declare what type of item they're going to contain. And you do that with something called generic notation. So type that. That's called a diamond operator. So you declare the type of the item you're going to add to the list. And I'm going to type strings. So strings, each item within the collection must be an instance of class. If you want to contain integers, you would declare integers, the helper class for int, not the int primitive itself. Now I will give the object name and I will name it list. So space, let's say list is equal to keyword new. And then here, but then instead of declaring list as a constructor, I will use implemented class or a concrete implementation of the class and that will be a ray list. All right, so now let's talk about the syntax. All right, I'm going to add a semicolon here. So the first when I selected a ray list, I got an import statement on the top of my code. This is also a member of java.util. So to use the class, you should import. Next, notice again that I'm using a constructor method for a real list class, not for the list interface. While it's possible to create an instance of an interface, you would have to completely implement all of its code. And if you want to use a list object that builds into a Java framework, use a real list. And the real list contain an ordered collection of data. You could think of it as a resizable array. When you declare an array list, you can declare it with a constructor with no value and then the array list will grow as needed. Or if you already know how many items you're going to add to the list, you can pass in an integer value and that will result in more efficient allocation of the memory. I'm going to leave this to an open number of items. Also notice that you don't have to pass data type of the item again. This was something that was introduced in Java 7. Prior to Java 7, you would have to add a declaration of the data type again. But it was redundant, so in Java 7, you can simply say, use the same declaration as I did before. Add some items to the list, all right? So here I will type list decimal point. I get all the methods available here, add, size, add all, clear. So we'll talk about them in a minute. Use the add method, all right? And here I need to pass in a string value. So add double quotation. I will say Victor Australia, let's say Australia and a list dot add again and pass in a string value again. So Victoria list dot add and then say Melbourne. All right. All right. So now we're going to print that out to the console. To do that, I'm going to simply call out as out print line and I'll call it list. I'll run the program now and I'll explain that in a second. All right. So once I run the program, I get this message, Australia, Victoria, and Melbourne. So and I see the data list is in order in which I declared. Now, when I pass the list object into a print line, I'm actually calling the two string method of that object. And that method output a pair of brackets and the value separated with commas. I'll describe later how to use your own iteration code to loop through the data in your own. Update the list now. So I'm going to come down here and let's add another item to the list. So list.add and this time I'll call it Sydney. All right. And then let's print it out. 
So list, let's run the program. All right, as you can see that we have updated the list now, okay? So now let's look at the method, how to remove any item from the array by using its index number. So how do we do that? So let's start list, right, dot remove method. So it's gonna remove from an index number any integer, all right? So let's use that. Okay, and then as you guys know that the array listing our index starts from zero instead of one, okay? So that's zero, one, two, and three. We have three, all right? So let's say I want to remove uh, Australia from the list, okay? So I'll type zero and then semicolon. And now let's print out the list again, S out, I'll call it list, and let's run the program. And the third time, as you can see that, Australia has been removed, okay? And the next method we're gonna look at is how to uh, get a item or a list of item from the array uh, by its index number. So let's try string, okay? Because that's a string value, so I'll just string. Let's say city is equal to list dot get method, all right? So we're gonna use the get method now. So we have one, two, three, four, okay? Uh, sorry, zero, one, two, and three. Indexing start from zero, always remember that. Let me get uh, on one, okay? That's going to be Victoria. Uh, forgot the semicolon here, and let's print it out, all right? So S out, and I'll say the second city is, and let's add the concatenation and let's type city all right so let's run the program again all right so as you can see that the second city is melbourne okay i'm using the first one as you guys know that we have removed the list from almost uh, we have removed australia uh, from the list if i get rid of this statement all right and now I will run the program. So now we're gonna get a Victoria. All right, so we got that Victoria. Now let's see uh, how to use the index of method in the list. All right, so let's use, uh, let's look at our integer variables. I will name it POS is equal to list dot index of, all right. So index of, I will say, find me Sydney, okay? So you can find out, and it's going to compare it to the, uh, compare this string value to all the items in the list, all right? Then so it's gonna tell me where is it. So let's put the semicolon here, and then let's print it out. So I will say, Sydney is at, position and let's get out of the quotation and then I'll say POS that's a variable for that let's run the program and let's find out where is Sydney at what position so Sydney is position 3 so we know that 1 2 3 4 so if I remove Australia so let's say list dot remove and then I'll say 0 okay and let's run the program again Okay, and now Sydney is at position two because we have removed Australia. So these were a few methods and a rail list. Uh, it's pretty good and um, that's it for this video guys. And the next video is going to be about sorting arrays and then we'll talk about how to search through arrays, all right? So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Cheers.